Hello, Milwaukee. This is Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministry. This is the day that our Lord and Savior has made, and boy, we're going to really rejoice in it. Along with myself and my partner in Christ, Pastor Charles Zimmer. We welcome all our listeners to our weekly broadcast show, Focus 2020. As believers in Christ, we must have a 2020 vision and a transformative mindset to live and abide and walk in the plan and the will God has for your life. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Pastor Walter Orange here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM for our weekly broadcast, Focus 2020. We had a wonderful time last week. We were just talking about with people uh, under stress. And then we were closing out, and we want to continue to because the subject had gotten so good and a lot of our faults. We want a little bit more of it, so we're going to give it to you today. And what we were talking about why is it so hard for you to allow your yes to be yes and your no's to be no? And for the one and only that will help us understand what I'm talking about is my co-host, the one and only. Today, last week, he found himself in his own mind. And he has such a great smile as he's writing these notes to try to remember who he is. <laughs> but I'm going to help him understand who he is. But first, I have to do a ventriloquist act. Are uh, you are absolutely? <laughs> you know what? That ain't that ain't that ain't what they want to hear. You said last week your yes is going. Oh wait a minute! First of all, your yes got to be yes, and your yeah, no's no got to be no. no. Okay, so if your yes is yes, your first name is who? Walter Owens. Okay, and your nose is who? <laughs> Charles Henry. <laughs> so you, Walter Owens, Charles Henry, that's your name. You know what? I try to be civilized. That, that Oh, my God. But it does not work around you for some reason. You got to take the right medicine. <laughs> it's called brain consumption. <laughs> I love it. I see that. You see if you take that was a good one. Hey, hey. I give you credit on oh, that. Oh, wow. Well, since you give me credit, why don't you really tell people who you are? Because they probably want it. For those who are joining us, you got to understand, this is what I deal with every week. <laughs> I am Pastor Charles Emery, assistant pastor of Redeemed Faith Fellowship, under the leadership of Pastor Cornell Anderson, our coach. Amen. Amen. I hope coach is tuning in and taking his notes because you might get in the game. <laughs> I might get in. <laughs> you might get in. No, I'm going to put you in today. That's what, again, wow. we're just talking about. We just want to uh, welcome everybody who's joining us. Joining this, joining, joining this, this, joining this, <laughs> joining us this week. See, I, it's rubbing all. I gotta take my medicine. But uh, we had a wonderful time Amen. last week, Pastor. Because one thing, we have to be very careful when we tell Jesus yes, because when we give him his give give him our word, he's going to make us stand up to it. I said that to say this: if you say yes to Jesus, make that yes, yes. He's okay with you if you say, Father, I can't do this. No, he will understand it. He will receive it better. But we are so quick to tell Jesus yes, because Jesus said in, uh, what is it, Matthew 5 and 13, let your communication be yay, yay, or nay, nay, for whatever, whatsoever is more than these coming of evil. Same as you go to court, or not, not so much in court, uh, what is it? The Senate and the Congress when they are mm -hmm. in, uh, in the chambers, they uh, what they say? Who vote for this? Give me a yay or a nay. nay. But they yeah, use the scripture, and a lot of people miss that because they want you to tell the truth right then. Uh, when you go to court, that's where I'm going. Yep. Put yep. your uh, hand on the Bible and, and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the, to tell, tell the, the truth, truth, the soul, whole, whole truth, truth, and nothing but the truth? Nothing but the truth. So help you, Me Satan. God. So help you, God. So help you, Satan. You no, know, it says to help you. It might well be so help you, Satan, because that's how <laughs> that, 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 Come on now. <laughs> now you get what I'm You're talking right. about. But we're saying that to say uh, this, family. We want you all to understand why. It is so important to let your yes be yes and your no be no. Pastor, just fill our listeners in for people that's joining us the first time where we was talking about when our yes is yes, sometimes we get ourselves caught in a situation. We have to change our mindset 
and to understand how it is important, how is important what your word means. It's very important. And Jesus made it clear. It says, it says the Pharisees and the teachers of the experts, they were experts of keeping the letter of the law. They would never, he said, let me, let me read this again. He says, the Pharisees and their teachers were experts at keeping the letter of the law. But Jesus warns his hearers that unless their righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they would never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoa. And he said, this statement would be shock to, to his hearers because the Pharisees and the scribes were looked up as a paragon. They mean as experts, excellent, mm-hmm. of obedience. And Jesus points out that the technical obedience is not enough if the spirit of the law is broken. You hear that? Come on, Pastor. The spirit of the law. So, in other words, if I say I'm going to follow God's commands, His laws, and decrees, just like the scribes and the Pharisees, they held the letter of the law to the T. So they dot the I across the T's, and they were considered to be more wise and more knowledgeable of the law of God but he said, unless your righteousness or your works add up to the measurement of how their standards are in the eyes of God, because he said, unless you keep the spirit of the law, then you broke the law. And the spirit of the law is where you get your, your mind, your heart, your spirit all in alignment with God's commands to follow in obedience to do what God tells you to do. Well, why is it so hard for us to just not follow the law? Easy. Come on. Flesh. The flesh doesn't That's want to obey. Going. That's the where flesh I was going. Is, we, and the thing that God spoke to me when you was talking earlier is that a lot of times we operate under compulsion. So so what I'll do, I'll do things according to my flesh that sounds good, that looks good, that feels good, and I break the law. Jesus made it so clear about if a person says, he said, if you, he said a person is a murderer, right? He said, you say that a person murders, you know, they're guilty, right? He says, if he said, but if you even commit murder in your heart, you already done sinned. You know, so you always compare everything from natural to the spirit. Because if I com- continue to operate in the flesh, then my flesh is going to oppose God's commands, laws, and decrees, and it's going to cause me to become a lawbreaker. You know, and when I break the law of God, I put myself in danger of the judgment of God. You know, uh, Pastor, I like that when you was talking about murder in Matthew 5, 21 and 22, 22, Jesus teaches that it is not enough to be technical innocent of murder because one can have murderous thoughts and attitudes without carrying out a physical act. I want you to break that down for our listeners here because that's interesting is that he teaches us it's not enough to be technically innocent of murder because one can have murderous thoughts. Explain that to us. Well, one thing he's referring to is the mentality. Where is your mindset? Just like he makes it clear about a person, and like it says here, so Jesus says it's not enough to be technically innocent of adultery because of lustful, a lustful look destroys one's purity of thought. Mm-hmm. So everything, it goes back to the, either the flesh or the spirit. So if my mindset is operating according to the dictates of the flesh, what it says, I become hostile or enemy towards God. And Jesus is making it clear that if I commit sin in my heart, I already done done the sin. So just like he said, look upon a, mo- a woman to lust after her, you already committed adultery in your heart. So because of the heart is it's prone to do evil, my heart is not lined up with obedience to God's word. So my spirit, it defies God's order, his commands. So how does that line up, what you just shared with us, speaking my yes to be yes and my no's to be no? One way it lines up is because if I don't allow my conversation to be seasoned with salt and grace, I'm going to say everything the enemy put in my mind to say that contradicts God's word. So even though I say I'm a child of God and I continue to live according to the dictates of the flesh, I'm telling God your grace wasn't good enough. The cross wasn't good enough. You're not good enough for me. So therefore, I'm going to live my life the way I feel I want to live my life, which leads me on a path with the hell and destruction. And one thing about God, he gives you choices. So if I say, yes, God, I'm going to follow your laws and your decrees. He said, God told Joshua in verse chapter one and eight, he said, he said, meditate on the word of God day and night. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Keep it in your mouth. Don't let it depart from you. He said, word, make you prosper. You have good success and everywhere you go. Right? So if I take the word of God, literally, 
And I say, God, I'm going to read your word. I'm going to study your word. I'm going to dissect your word. I'm going to meditate on this word. I'm going to keep this word before me. So when temptation does come knocking at my door, I can re respond with the word. See, that's why I, want, I love about the story of Jesus going to wilderness. Is that after being full of the Holy Ghost for 40 days fasting, he became hungry. But when Jesus became hungry, that's when the enemy came to test him. But one thing about Jesus, even in a vulnerable state, he still was strong in the spirit to speak the word. I like that. I love that. I'm Let me change that like. I love that because like what you were saying, and we have read that story so many times where, like you said, when he was fasting and, 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 and in the wilderness going through that, taking all that God was putting on him, we look at when we say hungry, we talking about a piece of bread to eat. Right. But he was so full of the strength, even in his weakness, mm -hmm. he still recognized the enemy trying to attack him and asking him to do something. He didn't agree to it. That's right. See, that's what people miss. He didn't agree to it. He didn't let his yes be yes or no. No, he used the word. He, he used, used the, the bread. Word. Yes, he, he did. He used the bread, the life inside of him. And that's what we got to do is a lot of times we get our get ourselves in a situation, Pastor. Like you asked me to do something for you. And my mindset is saying yes. And I have all the tensions to do that. But then whew, the right. devil blow in my ear. Now I done changed everything because now you become an option. So right away, I done took away the word from God because God said he want us to be like him. I made you in my image. If he can't lie, if his word is the word, why can't we do that? But we look for a way out because it's more comfortable to us. And that's what we're witnessing in the world today. We're in a physical uh, war. Uh, I'm not a spiritual. Help me hold the spirit. We're dealing with a spiritual war that's going on in our world, in our time. Is because one person told him he's going to do that. But in his heart, he knew instead of saying, yes, it's a name. It's a no, I'm not doing that because it's not benefiting me. And that's what we find, family, is when I, I when I yes is not yes, is because we're simply looking at what do I benefit out of this. And one thing the word tells us, so as a man thinketh in his, his heart, heart, so is he. Come on, Pastor. So every time I think a negative demonic thought, it does not bring it to subjection to Jesus Christ. I invoke the judgment of God upon my life. And people don't realize that. You curse yourself. You curse your finances. You curse your health because of negative thoughts. For one thing, I was thinking of something uh, yesterday, how a lot of times people, they work, 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 got to get all this, this money, got to spend these hours of working, got to work all this. Some people work three jobs a day. Because they want more and more and more. They're never satisfied. They have an excessive appetite. And the appetite is never fulfilled. And so the enemy does that to occupy your time. One thing God says, if you trust me, I will supply all, all your, your needs. needs. Right? Because God has the power. He has the resources that we need. You don't have to work three and four jobs to be satisfied in life when you trust God. God can take that one job and take the little you have and multiply it. If he can take two fish and, and five loaves of bread and feed a multitude, what makes you think he can't do the same thing for you with the little you have? Preach, Pastor. I've seen Preach. God do this many times in my own personal life. When I was living on my arm, I first came back from Texas and lived in Milwaukee in an apartment. I lived on $50 a month, literally, $50 a month. I took that $50, I offered it to God every month and said, God, I thank you for the overflow. And because I trusted God in his word, keeping the oath, this is something about keeping the oath. Because I say I trust you, I say I rely on you, that you're my resource, you're everything I need. Then God, I'm going to prove to you my loyalty to you, even in my substance. I took that $50, still tithe off that $50 every month and trusted God. And every time, God starts sending money to me from different directions because I trusted him. I did not go lacking anything. I always had more than enough every month. Hey, Pastor, let's take a quick break. Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministry, and I want to welcome my partner in Christ, Pastor Charles Emery, Assistant Pastor Dean Faith Fellowship. 
You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020. Hey, they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM and every Sunday at 6 o'clock PM. And what will they receive when they get here? They will receive a word from the word and you will have a life-changing experience and you will be blessed. L'chaim. Meaning life. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor, when you said that what dropped in my spirit, and this is when your yes is yes and your no is no, when God has something to do with it. I remember the story where I read there was one man that came to this lady's house. She didn't have nothing but enough just for her son. That's it. And, and he's asked her, do you have any bowls? You know, you go get these bowls and these oil. And I say, I'm saying that to say this here, when you— Put your heart and give it to Christ and let him know how much you appreciate of the little things. The little, the little things. Because what we see is small, it is big to him. And then the story said that her cups had so much oil in it. It overflowed. Flow. I'm saying that the to what you said. never ran empty. It never ran, ran empty. And that's what God would do because his yes, he said, didn't he say, I would supply, supply all your needs. And yep, he knew it. she needed. At the festival, Jesus came. His mama said, well, they done ran out of wine. Woman, what they got to do with me? Because I know who you are. Because they're down. I see in you what you truly are. What he do? Uh, overflow. Overflow. They said what? He made he, enough. Yes, and he they did. said he saved the best for life. Saved the best for life. Come on now. Come on, Pastor. Yes. And that's a yes from God. So that's what all he's asking you and I family is let our yes be yes and our no be no. You don't have to always, no, 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 no. Let me change that. Let me change that, Father. You always do that with God. You always, if you're going to do something, do it. If you're not going to do it, he can understand. But do not, do not get yourself caught up in trying to please man by telling them to do something. Oh, Pastor, uh, I'll see you next week, man. It's so good to see you. I haven't saw you in years. What are you doing now? Well, I'm pastoring. Where you at? I'm at Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church, and we have a great time Sunday. Man, I'm on my way. I'll see you Sunday. Knowing, soon as I turn my back, I won't be see you till wait, the next time I see you. And that's when we were kids in school. Absolutely. But our mind tells us one thing, but that's why I'm saying, why are we so quick with a fickle mind to change what we tell a person because we don't trust in God's word. Or do you don't trust yourself? We don't. Tr- that's 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 another point. That's two points to even discuss. We don't trust God's word. We don't trust ourselves. Numbers twenty three nineteen. Go it says God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Mm-hmm. Or has he spoken, shall he not make it good? So. Anything that God promises is yes and amen. He's not going to say no if he says yes. He's not going to contradict himself. Come on. That's what it says. When he says something, he should he repent about what he said? Should he change his mind about what he said? No, he's going to do it. We get to the place, we contradict God's word. So I don't trust God's word. I'm not relying on God's word. I rely on my resources. I rely on my strength to fulfill what I want to do in my life. I'm going to do what I feel was best for me to do for me and my family because I know what to do to make things work. <laughs> so you become like Lucifer. I, 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 I. And he said the son of the morning. So because of this, this selfishness, the ill will that we have in ourselves, we defy God's word and we continue to say no to God. We should be saying yes to God, no to the devil. But instead, we say no to God, yes to the devil. So that's why when we're saying yes, yes, say yes, your yes be yes, your no be no. Because if I say yes to God, then I know God, you're not a man, you should lie. I know God, what you speak, you're able to perform it. I know God, you're able to make it good. So everything I'm trusting you to do in my life, God, my body might be afflicted. God, you say a word that the trees, the leaves on the trees will heal it for the nations. God, I want to thank you that by the stripes from heal, I receive it, and I believe your word because it's yes and amen for me. Amen. So in other words, we should do what Matthews uh, 5, 33 and 37 speaks about. It says, following the same pattern, Jesus addressed the subject of telling the truth. 
Come on, Pastor. Jesus tells the crowd not to break their oath. An oath was a promise to do or not do something, invoking God as witness and the one to bring judgment. If the promise was broken, it was common for people to make oath to emphasize their seriousness and truthfulness. Sometimes they would swear to God's name. No, I'm sorry. Sometimes they would swear on something less than God, such as heaven. The point of the lesser oath was to allow some flexibility in breaking the oath since God's name has not been invoked. They reason and they continue breaking the oath. When you're speaking to God, when you're speaking to someone, God is looking at you. He's hearing what you're saying, Pastor. Now, why would you tell someone that you want to do something for them? When when you got married, you, you, you solemnly swear to God, and that was the oath that you said you would do. When you're in court, there's an oath. When you're in politics, and in government, there's an oath that you said you're going to fulfill. You're saying this one thing, but then someone comes to you and, and whispers in your ear, Everything that you stood for, everything that you claim that you represent, and we look at what's happening into the world today, that oath has been broken, and look where we're all at today. Listen to this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4, it says, When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. Verse 5, it is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Come on, Pastor. Do not let your mouth lead you to sin and do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. <laughs> Why? Whoa, 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 whoa. You read that? Read it. <laughs> Say, do not let your mouth lead you to sin and do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the works at your hand. It's very important to make a vow, fulfill it, then make a vow and don't fulfill it in the eyes yes, of God. That's right. He that's calls right. you a fool because a fool doesn't care. They, they love their folly. They love making mistakes and keep on lying and deceiving folk because that's their character. When you have a godly character, this is what God put in my spirit. When you have a godly character, your integrity to God is to keep your word before God and don't allow nobody to deceive you from fulfilling your vow to the Lord. You know what, Pastor? I want I to I say something. When you were saying that about your character, when an actor become a character, he takes on that spirit of what he's portraying. Hypocrite. Come on now. Come on. And, they, and a lot of actors, some of the great ones, cannot ever get out of that character because... The more they get into that character, the more people want from that. So when they are walking normally in their regular life, people don't even see who they truly are. They see that character. But when you have the character of Christ, that's what you want to see. Because if I'm going to be an actor, I want to act like Christ. You know, many um, musicians, artists today, musical artists today, they tell you in, in, in interviews that when they before they go on the stage, Another spirit takes over them, and they take on another character. And that character causes them to perform the way the enemy wants them to perform. So, like you said, people don't know their true identity because they don't know their true identity. They, they enable the enemy to come in and control them and manipulate them so it becomes something they truly are not. Well, you know, uh, when I was in the music industry, my stage name was Mr. Hype, and it was a character. It was a character when people... You know, I see them, they, hey, how you doing, hype? And I was like, I'm Walter. They don't, they don't, they don't know how to address that. Mm -hmm. But when I gave my life to God, that character That's had it. to leave. That's it. You know, Pastor, I'm looking at the time, man, this has been so beautiful. And I just pray that our people receive something out of this series. Let your yes be yes and your no's be yes. no. But every week, Pastor, you give us such a great word of encouragement and a prayer. Can you give that to us right Amen. now? Amen. We want to encourage you today, those who are listening, that you allow your word to be yes to the Lord and no to the enemy. Because the enemy wants to deceive 
and manipulate you from walking in your purpose and your calling. So let the Lord lead and guide you by the Holy Spirit. So, Father, today, let this word convict, change, and reprove us all to become better stewards of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we fulfill our calling before you, God, and keep our vows to you, O God, and fulfill it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, Pastor, I just want to say this month, in the second week, in the second week of our broadcast, I just want to thank God for you saying yes, being with me. Family, y'all been with us this month. It's the fifth wow. year. Wow, praise five God. Years. That's awesome. Yes, yes five Amen. years. And the number of grace because, God, grace. we just That's thank it. you. We just want to thank everybody here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM. Our uh, leader, the director, Ryan, yes. I engineer, boy, yes. I, we got to give it to Justin. I mean, he Amen. makes us sound good. And before we start the show, you ought to hear this guy sing. He sounds just like my pastor friend over here. And they sing this song like, <laughs> but see, embrace joy. And that's what we're about. We want to just bring joy into your house when your ear gate is clogged and you will know this year. We love you. And just remember this. God bless, bless you. you. Shalom. Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministry, and I want to welcome my partner in Christ, Pastor Charles Emery, Assistant Pastor Dean Faith Fellowship. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020. Hey, they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM and every Sunday at 6 o'clock PM. And what will they receive when they get here? They will receive a word from the word, and you will have a life-changing experience. And you will be blessed. Lachayim. Meaning life. Amen. Amen.